Hi, in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to quickly create an intro like this one. So to get started I'm gonna create a new composition. It's gonna be using the HDTV 1080 preset and it's gonna be 3 seconds long. So right now I'm gonna create a new white solid which is gonna be used as the background. The next step is gonna be creating a new composition which is also gonna be 3 seconds long and it's gonna be used for the logo but we're gonna change the width and the height. I'm gonna split the height into two, which is gonna be 540, and then I'm gonna also set the width to 540, and I'm gonna hit OK. So right now, I'm gonna take the logo, and I'm gonna drop it into this composition. The next step is taking the logo composition and then dropping it in right here. So the reason why we pre-composed it is that you can always change the logo later and it's going to be much easier. So the next step is to do the trick that's going to make it appear as if it's in 3D and it's really, really simple. So if you don't see these switches, then click on toggle switches and modes and we're going to enable the 3D switch for the logo. And right now with the logo composition selected, I'm going to press P. So that's going to show me the position property. I'm going to alt click on this stopwatch and we're going to take these original values and then we're going to add to them. So I'm going to open the brackets and I don't want to add anything to the X value. So I'm going to type in zero. I'm going to separate it by a comma. Then I don't want to add anything to the Y. So I'm also going to type in zero, separate it by a comma. And then I'm gonna type in index and I'm gonna close the bracket. So right now the value changes to one, which means that the value of index is one. But what is index? Index is simply the order of the layer in the composition. So if I duplicate it and I take a look at the second layer, you can see that it's index is two and now the Z value of the position is set to two. So I'm going to delete one of them and right now to fix this, since I want the first layer to have a value of zero right here, I'm going to simply take the index and then I'm going to subtract one from it. And as you can see, the value is now back to zero. So right now I'm going to duplicate this logo one and two times by pressing Control D with the logo composition selected. And then I'm going to rename the first one to logo front and the third one to logo back. Right now I'm going to disable the visibility for the logo front so that you can see what's happening once we apply brightness and contrast. So we're going to apply it to the one that's in the middle to the second layer. And we're going to click on this box that says use legacy because if we don't nothing's going to happen. And I'm going to change the contrast to negative 40 and the brightness to negative 20. So as you can see right now the logo is a bit darker. The next step is going to be turning on the visibility for logo front. Then as you can see there's this shy switch and this is an icon of a Kilroy. You can check that out on Wikipedia. It has an interesting story but I'm just going to click on it and as you can see the Kilroy has hidden behind this imaginary wall. So what this means is that when I enable the shy switch, this layer is no longer going to be visible. And then let's select logo and logo back and parent them to logo front. So this way, once I rotate the logo or I change the scale or the position, these two are going to follow. So right now select this logo and then press and hold control D. And even though it appears as if nothing is happening, it's actually duplicated it. So I need around 60 layers. And once I have enough, let's go to 65. Um, once I have enough, I'm simply going to click on this icon right here and I'm no longer going to see those layers. But right now, if I select logo front and if I press R, if I rotate it, you can see that all those stacked layers make it look as if it's 3D. So right now the next step is going to be animating this. I'm going to set this back to zero and I'm going to create an X and Y keyframe. Then I'm going to press S and that's going to show me the scale and I'm also going to create a keyframe. So right now I'm going to press U 
twice, which is going to show me all these keyframes that I've created. And right now we're going to create a scale keyframe right here at the 20th frame and also at the 40th frame, which is at one second and 10 frames. Then I'm going to move the playhead to one second and I'm also going to create two rotation keyframes. So this is pretty much the layout of the keyframes. So right now let's change these values. So for rotation, I'm going to set both of these to 90. And for the scale on the first keyframe, I'm going to set the value to zero. And then for the second keyframe, I'm going to set it to 110. And for the third keyframe, we want it to be at 100. So this is what's happening right now once we've changed these values. So as you can see, we have a pretty nice animation. And right now I'm gonna select all these keyframes and I'm gonna hit F9, and then we're gonna adjust them in the graph editor. So first I'm just gonna select this set of keyframes and then I'm gonna open the graph editor. So to see the same thing that I'm seeing, make sure that you're editing the speed graph by right clicking in the graph editor. And right now I'm going to select the green one, which is used for the Y rotation. So I just want to edit the Y rotation and I'm going to make it really fast at the beginning and then gradually slow down towards the end. So that messed up. So I'm going to undo that and press shift while you're dragging it so that the value right here doesn't change. So as you can see, mistakes can happen. Then I'm going to select the X rotation and I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to make it fast right here at the end and really slow at the beginning. And then finally, I'm going to select the scale and I just want to play with these keyframes right here. I want to make it look like this. So right now, if I preview this, you're going to see that the animation is a bit smoother. So that's what we have so far. Now the next step is going to be animating the X rotation right here towards the end. So we're going to set a keyframe at the 25th frame for the X rotation and also 15 frames earlier right here at two seconds and 10 frames. So we want the value right here to be at zero and the value right here to be at 90 degrees. So right now I'm just going to select these two and open the graph editor and then we're going to do the similar thing that we did to the first set of keyframes right here. So this is what we have so far. Now the next step and the final step is going to be creating a new solid which is going to be black and then we're going to make it start right here at two seconds and 20 frames. And we're gonna search for an effect which is called linear wipe. And we're gonna apply it to this solid. So as you can see, if we change the transition completion, this is what happens. So we wanna set the wipe angle to zero degrees and also the transition completion to 100. And then we're gonna set a keyframe and then all the way here at the back, we're going to set the transition completion to zero. So right now I'm going to press U and I'm going to select these keyframes and I'm going to hit F9 to easy ease them. So this is what we've made right now. And right now I can preview the entire animation. So right now this is ready to use. You can simply place it in the beginning of your videos and then key out the black solid and you're done. That's it for this tutorial. For more tutorials, please check out my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.